Last time we ended off with creating this, the entrance to level one. Now, this whole screen here is not quite uh, finished. There's a lot more I wanna do. The edges are gonna look different. I want plants, I want trees. These shadows are kind of weird. See how they go only to one of these um, flames. So I'm actually gonna do like four different shadows at least, or maybe, maybe each world will have the number of lights, that many shadows, and so each one will be a little bit more faded. Um, like if I'm over here in this bottom, near this bottom left one, I'll have three other shadows, but they'll be more faded. So anyways, little touches. But things to focus on today, what I wanna do is be able to stand, as soon as I move right here, there'll be some kind of animation. Like what I want to happen is, um, this is an ancient sci-fi world, so um, some kind of like eye, yeah, I'm gonna have like an eye in the middle of the this middle pillar pops open and scans you and then you rise up, this whole platform rises up into the air to level one. Um, and this flux should be able to actually rise down as well. So if, when you when you go out of level one, you'll rise, you'll, you'll sink down into the ground. So, and also some levels I might have be underneath the, the ground. Some levels might be above. So that's the process today. I want to create a flux transition for just moving up to the next level. So let's get straight into that. Um, so the way it works is I need to create an exit component for that platform. And when you get near the exit component, that's what triggers the flux. So the um, where do I create those exit components for yeah here it is like this Oh yeah, okay. So when we create this dais component right here, this is where we'll add um, this exit component, which already points to the exit desk. And this is gonna need a collision component as well so that it can be collided with. We're going to call this K filter exit. That's what the category is. And we need a width and height for it. Get that just right. Um, so let's pick up the not dais, entrance one. There it is. How big is this dais? That is the question. It's about Fifty one by nineteen. It can't be right. Oh, it's actually fifty two by nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Great. Now we've got a collision component for that. Or and a exit component. So in system when we touch an exit component. Here it is. Hmm. So we're already going with a, this flux transition right here is, is always using downstairs or upstairs, depending on whether the exit Z is less than the current Z. So what we need to do is come up with a way that we can distinguish between this platform and stairs. So um I mean one thing we could do is just 
yeah, we could just add a variable to the exit component and that exit component, um, and that'll work. We'll just add a variable to the exit component for now. And we already know that it's an entrance. Yeah, I think this will work just fine. So maybe we can add a flux type to it, actually. Where do we have the flux types? Yeah, we can just use a flux type right from here. Let's actually move these over to the constants so we've got that accessible anywhere in the code. Let's get that building. Flux types, we got those. That's great. Component. Um, int flux type. Good. This is going to work. Int flux type. And then we just initialize flux type with flux type. And if we are using There we go, kflux none. Ah. Okay, great. It's always good when, when code gets better because now when we do this um, in system, when you actually step on an exit component, instead of just doing this jankiness right here, kflux, we can just do the um, exit.flux type. Yeah, and then this is, if it's k-tile stairs, and this is where we would actually do this. If the destination point exit dest is less than world get pause as z, it's flux downstairs or upstairs. Let's see if that compiles there. And then this one, yeah, this one, Oh. oh, it needs to be a flux type. I didn't know that that was an actual type. Oh yeah, it is. Good, that's great. So we can actually make this more specific right here. Flux type. And this is a flux type. That guarantees that you can't ever pass in a value that's not a flux type. Super cool, um, C++11 feature. What do you call it? Strongly typed enums, I think that's the, the name for that. So now we can go, and this is, ah. we need one more. Those, there we go. And then this last one right here, exit dest and k flux. Uh, this is where we need to do our new flux types. So we've got, now we've got flux type slide, downstairs, upstairs, open, lift sword, and now we got two new ones, k flux. Elevator up and elevator down. All right, and going back to area, we can make this K flux. Oh, it's gonna be similar. Exit dest dot Z is less than, oh, we've already got pause dot Z, so. K flux elevator down. Let's do that the other way around. Up. Oh. 
up down. Now let's verify that the stairs still work. That means that we're, we're fluxing all right. Yeah, that flux happened fine. That one's okay too. Great. One more time. Yeah. All right. Okay. We got those still working. Now what will happen right now with K flux ups, elevate up and down is it basically nothing will happen because there's no flux for that set up yet. So we need to create a flux type for those. And flux types can be kind of, we need to do a, yeah, all right, we already got phases created. This is great. We already got a nice little system going here. We need elevator up. It's kind of fugly, but get us started. Now let's get that elevator down as well. And this one, I'm just gonna do nothing with right now. So begin does nothing, end does ends the whole transition. There, that one's less fugly. Now new phases. Get a K phase, oh, phases. We need phases for all these as well. So we've got overall flux types and we also got phases, sub phases within the flux types. So elev elevator up, elevator down. K phase elev elevator up. Why doesn't it like those? Oh, because it's supposed to be called phased elevator up. Right. What's up, Tim Scar? How's your day going? Okay, so we can hook up the flux here as well. On transition begin, this is overall flux type elevator. Up is gonna start with transition um, or phase, K phase elevator up. Same thing with the down.
Animated camera, same. Transition end, same. I think it's all hooked up now. Let's actually give it a give it a try. No, let's actually let's get the elevator up phase so that it does something. Mm, we know that this is always the right the same. Same. Uh, we'll just move the player. My stream's lagging, huh? Hmm. Well, uh, the last time I tried to reset it, it was kind of a bad thing. You know what? I don't know. It might be actually be Twitch today, because um, Twitch was having some crazy issues when I was logging in. Like it didn't even show uh, weird stuff. It was like just super weird. So let's let's like try and ride it out for a good five or ten minutes, and if if things aren't going well, I'll reset the stream. So. Um, sorry about that though. Um, so what we what we, should, we need to do is like make the um, the old transient pause, new transient pause. There we go. We got those set. Now the new transient pause dot y. Let's just add four hundred so that the player will move upwards, and we need a transition duration as well. So transition duration, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. About four seconds. That ought to do. And then, yeah, when we're, I guess we can just do, oops. We can set it so it's the transition phase. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think it's Twitch because it was doing funky stuff when I was logging in. So I, I don't know, like, I don't know how to handle Twitch's glitches. Twitch and glitching. Which is glitchy today. Sorry, everybody. I hope the video isn't glitching too. So I'll check that later once we're done. But let's, uh, okay, so now it should, I just knocked on wood. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> if I step here, oh, it worked. Wait, did it? It definitely did some kind of flux right there. Oh, um, your position needs to be, okay, the, didn't change areas or anything, so, okay, I think it's actually doing it, let's say, okay, I know what it'll do, set a breakpoint here just to make sure that it's actually hitting elevator up. No, it didn't. Okay. So the, what's the problem then? Why isn't we're, why aren't we getting K's phase elevator up? We've got those. Let's do this, set a breakpoint there. Okay, we can play through this one because that's the flux open. Now let's do, okay, this is gonna be flux slide. Now this one here, what flux type are you? Um, flux type, elevator down. Oh, it's using elevator down. No wonder. Okay, good. Well, that's good. That was quick and easy to find. I'm glad I used the debugger because sometimes I do, I try and log out things and it takes too long. So the thing is, the world I've got set up so that I want this to rise. This is my first one I want to do. I want to do elevator up. So world. Okay, well, I guess this is going to have to be Level one is a positive one on this on those and um, if we're going to here we go 
there. That's going to link us to Z of 1. You're pretty new to game development. Oh, wow. Uh, no. Um, oh, first of all, good for you for launching your first game, and you should send a link so I can check it out. Um, but no, this is a cross-platform game. This is The engine I'm using here is Coco's 2DX. It's C++. And um, this is going to be this game is going to be out for um, Windows, Mac, Linux on Steam, and once I get greenlit and all that. But that the plan is to be on Steam for all the major platforms there for computers, and also iOS and Android and Amazon Store for mobile. So it's a, a mega cross-platform game. Um, okay, so that should work. We've got the Z of 1 set up. So this should rise into the air now. Okay, we don't need it. Well, let's, uh, let's check it out. Play through these two transitions and then just make sure this transition is... Yes, it's flux type elevator up. Good. We can turn off breakpoints now. Continue. Okay, I think that worked. Definitely got some weirdness going on because we're in a world that is just, I don't know, I haven't even set it up yet, so we're in a, a random world of its own. Let's see that transition um, from, yeah, oh, he ran. I don't want him to run. I just want him to stand. Okay, that's weird. But we're getting there. It's, um, oh, his Z is going to be need to be pretty high, too, and we're going to need to grab the elevator platform, the dais, and actually get that to rise into the air. So, elevator up, e dot render dot set animation, idle. South. Starting with one thing at a time here, and oh, e, e dot render dot sprite dot set um, set. Is it global z or is it local z? I think it's local. Local z order. Let's say five thousand. And then when we're done with this whole flux, we need it to be set back to what it needs to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, first of all, um, I'm proud of you for launching your own game, dude. You should send me a link. So send a link to your... Um, I'm going to just comment to you, too. And um, also, this game is... Um, Coco's 2DX for, um, this is going to be out on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and um, what do you call it? Basically just iOS and Android. Um, so yeah, here we, we can set the local Z order to one and it will automatically set itself right again so little baby steps to get this transition to go right okay that was cool that he was on top of everything but it was bad because he kept on doing his run animation why does he do the run animation? Let's set up a virtual... Uh, I think it's animate, no, what is it called? Yeah, animate, double alpha. And then C 
cool, man. Good for you. Yeah, when I, I was um I was pretty young when I released my first game too. In high school. Sweet. Playing soon. Nice. Wow, man. I like it, man. Making a 3D game is a complex thing. That's pretty cool. You even got a cool light there. And I'm wondering if your whole world is randomly terrained or, um, or whether this is all uh, like pre-designed. It's awesome. I want to check out more of um, the site and everything. Cool. Bam! Man, that's awesome. For a very first game, this is like a lot of. This is pretty well polished, man. Good job. Look at that. You even got good reviews. Wow. You're off to a good start. Nice. Nice job for. Doesn't matter how old you are. Render component and transient id. Render dot set animation. Why did he keep on doing his run animation? That doesn't make sense. But I've had this problem before. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. It's a lot easier to do pre-designed world, right, at first. And, I mean, that's that's just the best way to start doing games. Um, I've really been in lately into games that do totally random worlds, though. Because, um... Oh, yeah, now he did it. Okay. We got a lot of weirdness going on, but at least now he is idle south. So what would... I'm not going to go try and fix the bug which is causing this right now because it's just too much. So when we get to the end of this, we want to do a flux fade out, K phase fade out. And you're only traveling the distance, it's half the screen, which is, the screen is about 240. So really you only need to go 128 rather than this 400. Let's do 150 over a duration of two, three seconds and see if that, about that timing works a little bit better. You're working on an incremental type game. Ah. Yeah, that's a little better. Oh, and then, it, oh, it even faded out, nice. Very cool. Yeah, that's a good way to go, right? Watching streamers get to learn little things and stuff. That's kind of how I learned to make art. I, I watched a lot of artists on YouTube and that one just got better and better and better from just watching. It's, it's crazy how much that, that affects your subconscious and your everything and you just kind of get better at things that way. Good, I like the timing there. What's Something's up with the fade out though, so the fade out kind of needs its own, it needs to be aware of the f transition type. Um, actually, no, it's gonna be okay as it is. Oh, except that I do wanna do, um, Um, an elevator in. So, first let's get the let's get the platform going. So, 
I want to move the platform. How am I going to find that platform? It's a collision component with an exit. Oh, I guess we could just we could find it that way. Um, actually, um, I would say that Unity is easier than Cocos 2D or Cocos 2DX um, in this case um, because Unity is just a sort of it's a graphical you know it's a visual system you can use to make games and if you're already you know if you're already digging Unity I would I'll pretty much stick with it but if you're interested in learning Cocos 2DX um, just start small start with little things because it is cool it's a really rad totally open source engine so you're that's what I love about Coco Studio X is it's completely open source so I can do anything with the engine and I especially love that I can tweak the engine so much that I can get it running extremely performing extremely well so like this game I can like one little thing I did with my game is that when I um, watch this if I run the game and then I alt tab out of it like this or command tab on a Mac, but um, and I look at my little this. I've got a little bit of code that sets the window to not to inactive, and so it actually instead of running the game at full speed and at full frame rate, it backs down the frame rate to a tenth. So it's using way less CPU and way less memory, or not same amount of memory, but way less CPU and way less um, of the GPU. So that's one little thing that, that just you can tweak out the engine so much and make it really awesome um, and really perform well with Cocos CDX and it's completely open source so you um, you don't have to pay a licensing fee to Unity and um, and you can pretty much change the engine and also Cocos 2DX even though it has the name 2D now is um, it it's actually has 3D as well. well thanks man yeah. And if you if you are interested in making in learning some more um, Cocos 2DX, I actually wrote a book about it. Um, if you go to wizardfoo.com, this is my website. Um, I've got sort of an intro to Cocos 2DX. It's a totally free book here on. Just go to the book link, and it's like this will kind of walk you through the basics of making a, a platformer game for Cocos 2DX. So um, there's that. Um, yeah, so what we need to do with this elevator up transition is we need to grab the dais component and get that to move up as well. Oh, little bug. Alright, um, and we need to somehow, well actually we can just get it here. We've got this thing's render components, we can actually sync up that, oh this is actually going to be easy. So we need to find the find the collision component with the K filter exit category. So we can just do we can do auto ref um, entities equals entity get all collision component. And then for auto ref, mm, pair and entities. Oh, um, you know what? On Twitch, I don't really care how well known I am because I'm just making a game here, and I'm this is. Really, my whole point behind being on Twitch is to put myself in a state where I'm sharing my game from day one. So I've always written games, but this is the first game I've ever written completely on my own, making all the art, all the music, and all of the code. And so I really wanted to kind of document the whole process too. So I'm, I'm uploading all these videos to YouTube. That's really where I think the value is for people is, is sort of in the, in the long term being able to go back to the YouTube videos and watch how this game was developed. So. My goal for being here on Twitch is to build a following for the game, not build a following for my Twitch or my game development or whatever. I don't care about how popular I am of a game developer. I just care that this game gets visible to people and aware from day one. 
So I hope that makes sense. Um, and also, I'm not twitching consistently. Like lately, I've been twitching at 2 p.m. I used to switch around 10 p.m. I've kind of changed up the whole schedule too. So I, I really think it's hard for people to kind of get in a groove with me because I haven't gotten in my own groove for when I twitch and all that. So hope those um, hope that makes sense. Um, pair. So we're grabbing the entities, grabbing the pair, collision component. We need to find the collision component that has. We need to grab its, uh, we need to cl actually, um, we're going to grab, we need to grab its position. We need to grab everything. So let's make an int system int e pair got first. If um, e dot collision dot category equals k filter exit. We've now found it. So we can sync up its position with the player. So that's going to be e dot render dot sprite dot position dot set position. Um, E, no, oh, yeah, render dot sprite dot get position, and then we need to do minus the y needs to be subtracted a little bit, so let's do auto p equals render dot sprite dot get position, and then p dot y minus equals, I think about 12. Start with that. And then let's see if this all works. And we need to break here so we get out of this loop too. Um, but hey, no worries about um, talking or anything and asking questions. I really enjoy answering things. So um, thanks too for commenting. All right. Yeah, we're getting that going. And actually, that was about right, the right Y and everything too. All right. This is looking. Okay, so that P, I think the X needed to go over maybe three more pixels, and the Y needed to go less there, and then it needs to have a Z also. Render dot sprite dot set local local Z order of just below the player, so four thousand ninety nine nine nine. Okay, that was a bit weird because it it um the player actually needs to walk to the center of this platform first to get it synced up right. Because what happened there was the um the the platform sank a little bit because the player was a little bit wasn't quite in the right position at first so we need to make the player just in the perfect position right at the start and I do that also with the flux for um, lifting the sword he walks to pick up the sword where does that happen is it in zoom in yeah yeah We've got a whole flux type or phase for that. So, hmm. Maybe this actually should be its own phase type. So, the phase. What would happen is the player would move next to the sword or this platform. And then it would go to phase zoom in or phase elevator up. I think that's probably a better way to go at it. So we're going to add a whole new phase. And it's going to do this stuff to move next to the sword. So K phase. Let's call it walk to. 
I'm not sure how we're gonna de specify a destination just right just yet, but let's hook up this phase first. Okay, phase. Um, uh, what was it again? Walk to. We can make that phase, but let's get this all hooked up first here. Walk to. Okay. Oh, no, no. Okay. Ah, so that this is where when the transition begins, that is a transition overall type of elevator up or elevator down. Both of these are going to be K phase walk to. Maybe that's actually where we'll do the walk to's position. No, probably the walk to is actually going to be smart. We'll just know. Yeah, that's what it'll do. The walk to phase will be smart enough to know that if it's elevator overall type elevator up or down, it walks to the middle of the dais, and if it's lift sword, then it walks to the next to the sword. So now we need a bit of um, oh yeah, zoom in. We need to kind of copy this zoom in phase. Actually, I will just copy the whole zoom in phase at first. And Make this the walk to phase. So we don't need to change the new camera height or new camera position. We do need to set the old transient pause up first. And yeah, this is good that we're now doing this flux type sword. And all of these are good as well. So we're setting up the player to walk or it's using its run animation, but that's the same thing. So run sets whether it's flipped or not. Well, it sets it to be flipped. Oh, this needs to happen after we, okay. Let's just do all this after. And then this is where we find the sword and set your new transient pause next to the sword. And then all this is going to be moving next to the now maybe I should do a little helper function which is called find sword and find another one that's called find exit because this is just I might have to do this again that's a good idea So a little helper function. Func no. Sorry, I was thinking of PHP for a second. Um, this is called find sword, and it returns a system. No, actually, it'll fill a system int. So system int ref e. Doesn't matter what flux type it is, now that we're doing this little helper function. Alright, okay, so we get all the item components, we loop over them, we look for an entity. Hmm. 
I'm wondering if it's even possible to um, Yeah, I think it actually might be better to just return an int rather than trying to assign an int actually. Because I am not I don't want to go and write a copy constructor. So that's what we'll do. If this return f and then if this we'll just Man, I don't know if I can even make a blank int. This is kind of a weird method here. I guess we could. Hmm. Oh, I know what we can do. I think int can can take any id type, and then if we set zero for all these id types, it will create blank pointers to everything. So return system int zero. That'll make blank entity basically. Let's call this e instead of f. All right, that appears to be working. Now let's make another one for finding the um, the elevator. That's what we'll call it, the dais or whatever. Exit component. Oh man, that's a great way to find the yeah. Okay, we can combine a lot of functions into one right here, but it's doing that. So, another one of these helper methods to find an any exit component. Find exit. Easy enough. All right. Yeah. Let's actually I'll I'll replace these other methods and then and then just test them. So we'll test out downstairs. Um, we need a system and f equals can we do that? How about this? System in F. Oh man. Find exit. Alright, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna test all this out before I commit to it. Okay, if we're still compiling, I want to see if this is uh, working. Whoa, you're in Romania. It's midnight already. Yeah, man, good night. Have a good um, have a good sleep. And uh, good job on your game development. Keep going, man. And feel free to ask me any questions anytime. I'm nat at wizardfoo.com. N-A-T at wizardfoo.com.
Oh, because I'm doing the I'm doing the wrong transition there. Okay, let's do downstairs. And if downstairs still works, then we've got this this new fine sword method working all right. Yeah, all right. Cool. That's a really handy function. So we can just code falls away. I love it when that happens. Sweet. Okay. Same thing for disabling stairs. Auto F equals hmm, find exit. I think we might need to manually get it that, but this we don't need. So f dot exit. No, we don't have f dot exit. So we do need to manually get the stairs from um, f dot id. Disable the stairs, and then the position is f dot pause. All this stuff can just go like this. Oh, we're testing downstairs, not that. Yay! So the point there was to... Huh. Let's like just double check that this disable stairs is working. The breakpoint. And I'm gonna jump over that and then check the value of f.id. Yeah. Okay, so it is getting it. Good. I like that this method is working because it is way simpler than doing a for loop and all this other stuff. So and then we should also we should just verify if So I need to take a root break real quick. I'm going to be right back, you guys.
Now we can look for the other exit components. Wow, oh, okay, we got that. So what was the other thing? Collision component? Yeah, phase elevator up. Now we don't need to do all this jankiness. We can just do auto F equals find exit if f.id And we to test this out, we're also going to need to finish the action that um, the player walks to the, yeah, so the walk to phase, there it is, walk to phase. Oh yeah, and we need to change this one up too. So auto F equals find sword. If F dot ID. Good, now we're using this method pretty much everywhere, and it is way better. Okay, so these ones, move next to Deus. If flux type equals K flux ele elevator up or flux type equals K flux elevator down, then we can do find exit. And then if it's got a good ID, we move next to it, X. X we can leave alone. Y, oh, actually X is gonna need, X is gonna be the same. Y, let's check out that, that math here. Um, if we wanna center the player right on the middle of the dais, it's gonna need to be about a Y of 10. So new transient pause dot Y plus equals Sprite inner planning plus 10. Good. Set the player to run, and then when we're done, let's do a switch instead of this. Switch, switch flux type. Case, K flux type lift sword, transition phase lift sword, case K flux elevator up, transition phase equals K phase elevator up, break, and we'll do the same thing for down. So this is what we're doing. We're, we're breaking the overall elevator up action or flux into a couple different phases. One phase, it moves next to the sword. The next phase, it actually does the elevator up. The last one, it fades out. And then it fades in. It um, does the elevator up again. Oh, uh, yeah. So elevator up is going to need to work two different ways. One coming from the bottom up to the middle 
and the other one from, from the middle going to the top. So we'll get that figured out next. But default transition phase equals K phase none there. All right, that ought to work. Let's test out the sword first because that action, we want that to still keep on working the way it was. And then we'll test out the elevator to make sure you can walk near and then do the elevate action. Oh, we already got the sword, so we need to, need to um, not have the sword. So I'm going to set a default, oh, defaults. I want to set item sword, I think is item one, yeah. So I'm going to set this setting to zero. And I won't have the sword anymore. I did it again, defaults. I still have the sword, what's up? Oh, well, maybe because I had it equipped. Yeah, actually I want to test that out. If I don't have the sword, and I walk down here, even though I had it equipped, yeah, okay. So I need to write a little bit of code real quick in the game where it loads settings. Okay, so after it's loaded the current equipment, it will check and just make sure that it has it as a possession. So if not e dot gear dot has e dot gear dot equip i Okay, so if if the current equipment is not none and you don't have it, then turn it off. E.gear.equip i equals okay, item none and e.gear.ready i is false there. That if I go and ever change that setting again, it will automatically not have this. Like if I turn off the sword, yeah, see now I don't have that in my equipment either. But why don't I have bombs anymore? Okay, something went wrong. Wait a minute. Hmm. Yeah, I can't I can't use the two bombs I have. That's weird. Anyways, I'll figure that out later. Yeah, okay, that works. Basically all I was verifying there is that the player could walk, pick up the sword. So the walk to phase is working okay there. I wonder if it saved the sword. It didn't. Okay, so we need to run that, that getting the sword phase out. So I can just set up. Uh...
I just noticed that the numbers in the HUD actually don't go all the way down. Let's see if I can fix that really quick. HUD numbers font x y width height here we go so he's in nine i saw him with the sword what's up with that but oh, i did that totally fixed the font okay all right i must have i must have really messed up this whole this bit of code. Okay. Sidelining this code for a minute. I do have the sword. Oh man. Really messed things up. Sweet, a new version of Java is available. Here's that bug. I need to fix this too. But all I want to do is get the sword. Okay. Fix those other bugs later. Yeah, oh yeah, I like seeing that. He walked to the platform. In fact, both of those walk to phases are a little bit too long. So let's go back here to walk to and set it to maybe a half second. Let's see what that looks like if he just walks for a half second. I think it might be elevating a bit too fast too. Huh. Okay. Yeah, this is really more like a four tenths of a second. Elevator up. A little bit longer, like four seconds. That's good enough for now. Great, we've got a good start to this. Now, it needs to fade in, or fade out, fade in, and then actually rise back into its, its new area. So, how are we doing on time so far today? We're at an hour and 11 so far. We've got a little more time. We can do just a little bit more. So we need an area that it goes to. I'm wondering what the heck, why is it? Oh, 
there's a certain point where like downstairs, let's go look at the downstairs action. I think it might actually change the area. No, I, no, I don't think it would. It, it does that in a different bit of the code. Okay, so it would be fade in anyways that So no matter what, fade in is should disable the stairs. So I don't want even if you're even if you're riding that platform up, I want that platform to be disabled. You don't render that sprite, yeah. Hmm, this is what I was thinking of. Okay, it creates the area here. So yeah, it does set the position. Let's actually run around, let's just run around this area that it drops us in when, we're, when we elevate upwards. See if it's dropping us in the right kind of... Hmm, that was weird. Oh, but let's see. Oh, okay. I don't know why it would have put me... Hmm. I need some bombs in there. I don't know what world this is. So we need to figure that out. I think this might be... I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, I can see here. Okay, it put me at 411. Why did they put me at 411? Area transition 710 to 401. Now that's right. Sets it through its transition phase, and then all of a sudden, it like fluxes me up. So at the end of elevator up, Okay, lift sword phase is so long, I need to move it below everything else because it's taking up too much of my space here. There we go. So we go walk to, elevator up, elevator up goes fade out, fade out moves into fade in, but why would it change the world? It would only change the world. Oh, I know it's up. Fade out. Goes fade in. Yeah. But fade in. Ah, there's the problem. So we need to do a switch here. Kind of like the walk to. So if you're fading in and it's upstairs, then you're gonna go K okay, phase upstairs. If you're fading in and it's an elevator, up, hmm. Elevator up is gonna be another form of elevator up. 
but it's not going to start at the bottom. Hmm. Well, let's see. If I just do it like that, it's going to kind of do an infinite loop of elevating up. So let's just set it to K phase none at first. After it fades in, it sets to none. Got to fix that. It did it again. It put me in the wrong area. That's weird. Okay. Set a breakpoint here. And maybe try and fix that, that issue where Oh, I think I know what's up with the... We're gonna instead of setting the the render components position for the dais, we're gonna set. You don't like divide. Oh, Coco Studio X doesn't do divide by, but it does do multiply by for its vector. Um, Now that should still work with syncing up the position of the, the dais and the player and hopefully because it moved the position component instead of the render component at the end. Oh no, that is weird as heck. <laughs> All right, let's fix that. Um, you can see flux type is K elevator up. So we should get in here and do transition phases, phase none. Oh, but it at least needs to set the position of the player. Because the player is being off screen, that's why it walks the player up. So. I'm just going to set a note for that right now. Um, um, All right, we can turn off this breakpoint, and all I want to do now is just make sure the play, the elevator position is synced up right.
Hmm. So weird. The end does that. Why? 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 Let's actually find the exit and just set it invisible. F dot render dot sprite dot set visible false because it's off the screen already. We do, and it goes into that phase where it fades out. And I think what's happening is that it's the position component is not being set right, so that that causes. the position to go twitching between lots of things. I think if we just said invisible false, that will work. Yeah, it is moving, oh, it needs to move a little, an X to the, yeah, okay, good. Now walk to, walk to is a little bit off there. Oh man, I'm kind of starting to burn out my heads. Uh, that's a Deus here. New transient pause dot x plus equals two. I think there's about two pixels. What's happening is the is the Deus is shifts a little bit to the left as soon as you finish the walk to phase, and I think it's because it's sinking with the wrong position, so I think this would all line it up. One more, one more pixel. Yeah, all right. Okay, very good. Now I'm done for today. Tomorrow I'll work on this next phase of this elevator up action where it will it will rise up into a different area, a different world, and it will um it will do sort of like a different it might have to be a different phase. And um but it will actually this this area that it's going to will also have a platformy dais thing in it that it will rise up into this next world. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and thanks for all the great comments, you guys. Um, we'll catch you guys tomorrow.